gentlemen, welcome back to Dimension 20, The Unsleeping City. <laughs> My name is uh, Brennan Lee Mulligan. I'll be running this game for our wonderful cast of players. Uh, say hi, Intrepid Heroes. Hi, Intrepid Heroes. Uh, Brennan loves this bit. I love this bit. I can't lie. Uh, reintroducing our old friends, uh, Mr. Zach Oyama. Hello. Uh, Emily Axford. Yeah, hi. Lou Wilson. Oh, uh, hey. Javon Thompson. What? Brian Murphy. Hey. And Allie Beardsley. Hey. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start to bring us to this new land of myth and magic that might seem eerily familiar <laughs> to some of our viewers at home. It is a snowy, blustery day, cold, crisp, clear skies over the best skyline of any city that has ever been or will ever be. It is New York City, baby. Snow flurries from the sky as the wind kicks up. We see gusts of freezing air blow past the Chrysler building. <laughs> down through streets of honking cabs and just miserable looking pedestrians who crowd into the tunnels of the subways pack all of a sudden their winter coats trapping them in boxes of body odor and heat stuffed together on their morning commute down through the tunnels a blast of laundry mixed with hot garbage and the sweet smell of the hot nuts stands. We go through the hellish wasteland of Times Square, up, up, following snow again, over the bridge, Brooklyn Bridge right here, through neighborhoods where families tuck their little bundled infants through strollers and walk down little lanes of trees, back through neighborhoods where again, little corner stores sell hot bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches to morning commuters. A bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, the best thing you ever ate. It costs like what, 250, 225? That's a deal. Uh, uh, we follow the wind in sort of early to mid-December morning in New York City. A city where so many people dream of coming and making a life for themselves. And it's always felt a little bit like maybe just around the corner, there's a little bit of magic. I'm gonna go ahead and roll to see which of our PCs will go first. <laughs> we follow a little whisk of snow all the way down up through Williamsburg where the hipsters still dwell, but mostly the rich people that have now come and displaced those hipsters. <laughs> uh, and we arrive in a little neighborhood called Greenpoint, which is still an area of bars and partying. There's like rooftop places that have now been shuttered up for the winter or those few tenacious places that have those insane heating lamps up so people can still be on a rooftop bar in mid-December. And we go very close to the water. There is a dingy little doctor's office. This doctor's office might not be super accredited and it might not even be billed or listed as a necessarily a doctor's office. It's kind of in a corner of a warehouse, way down by the water. Uh, and the snow settles on a windowsill and in a dingy little medical office, we see our friend Pete the Plug. Allie, could you go ahead and describe your character for the group? Uh, yeah, I'm Pete. Uh, just let me know what you're trying to track down because I'm sure I can get it. Uh, <laughs> I sell everything and I personally take even more. Uh, <laughs> there's not an errand I can't run after a fistful of mushrooms. Uh, well, what does Pete look like? What's Pete wearing? Uh, Pete looks uh, almost exactly like Hunter S. Thompson, only young. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm wearing I'm wearing a cowboy hat. Uh, I got on shades, like the yellow shades, because uh, they're helping me with seasonal affective disorder right now. Uh, I am not doing well on the inside. Uh, I, did, I did go through a breakup. Uh, I did lose uh, the one, and she's thriving. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna be okay, and uh, uh, it's cool that I found a doctor that is so cheap, I'm hoping. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, um, so 
Pete, you are sitting on the little kind of like rollout paper on the thing. Uh, you've got the phone in your hand. This is your personal phone that actually has like smartphone apps on. It's not your business phone. Got it. Um, and you're looking at your text history with Priya. And, of course uh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking great. It's a big wall of you with yeah. timestamps kind of going back for like a couple weeks. Yeah. I said, and one more thing, um, a lot of time. <laughs> uh, I probably just should have started writing these things in a note and like saving it to draft, uh, but I didn't. <laughs> And uh, she just wrote back, okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of the doctor's office, uh, the door opens up and Dr. Lugash Primitsky uh, walks in. Uh, Dr. Lugash is a uh, very kind but intimidating looking guy. He is crazy, like broad shouldered with these huge hairy arms that kind of go like down a little bit longer than you imagine. He looks like he's got like strangling hands. Uh, <laughs> he has a bunch of like tattoos of like weird dragons wrapped around his arms. He's got like Cyrillic lettering in them. Um, you see he's got a little white shirt with a black tie, uh, no doctor's coat. He's got these, uh, uh, he's got, like a big square jaw with like a nose that got busted up in a bunch of boxing matches or something. Salt and pepper hair kind of in a flop, but these extremely thick rimmed black glasses. So he looks, his eyes kind of are magnified a little bit in his head, which <laughs> looks a little bit goofy. Uh, Dr. Lugash walks in. You've been working with Dr. Lugash for a while. Uh, your supplier, Seven, recommended him to you. Dr. Lugash works with people who need medical help for cash and not on the books. Um, you see that Dr. Lugash walks in with a little chart and goes, Okay, Peter, how's it going? Oh, that's oh. good, man. Yeah, you feeling all right? Your uh, test results do not indicate that this is true. What do you mean? Well, I'm looking here. Um, I guess we'll start with the small stuff. Your vitamin levels are not great. Mm. What have you been eating recently? I found out if you microwave cheese on a plate, you can peel it off and then it's like a crispy, like a crispy cracker. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> That's, um, you know you should not be eating just cheese, especially microwave. You thought you can't get, you could go down to the corner store and get the microwave toaster. At least the cheese would be more crisp. Yeah, 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 maybe you're right. Uh, yeah, I could probably eat like a salad or something. Um, so, or so, good news as well. Uh, it looked like you're totally healed up from the top surgery, which is great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, now I'm... Now I'm ready to... F <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, Pete. Okay, Pete. Yeah, you see that Lugash kind of comes over and <laughs> gingerly wraps his giant arms around you and pats you in the back of the head. <laughs> Peter Rigi. Peter's... Inconsolable. He's, he's just <laughs> weeping into his arms right now. <laughs> hey, oh, buddy, it's okay. Hey, it's hard. Uh, hey, talk to yeah, you guys. I, what happened? Yeah, I know. It's fine. It's fine. It's I'm clearly just, not fine. Uh, yeah. I'm just happy to be uh, alive. He pulls up a chair and sort of nods knowingly and says... I'm kind of reaching into my bag for a mushroom cap. He, see, he, goes, <laughs> he says, enemy gang, find out where you live. Now you have to move. Is that what's going on? Oh no, actually, um... What did you just eat? Mm? What did you just eat in your mouth? A vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he snags it and he says, this hallucinogenic... <sighs> Peter, you are on antipsychotic medication. Yeah, I know. That's why it's totally safe to do, <laughs> to do this. Peter, I, I can don't... take as much psilocybin as I want. I've got the remedy. Peter, wh when is the last time you slept? I haven't really been sleeping. Um... Uh, yeah, I have, I have like, right before I'm about to fall asleep, if I think of something scary or sad, uh, I just kind of stay up. And then all of a sudden it's like 5.40 a.m. and it's like, I might as well microwave some cheese, you know, and <laughs> start my morning. 
<laughs> Peter, I'm going to just run through a checklist real okay, quick yeah, here, if I can. You, you, okay. you have not slept in a couple days. Mm -hmm. It's affecting your health. Sleep is most necessary part of recuperation. Don't take another mushroom. <laughs> one, honestly, even for a good time, one is fine. Mm -hmm. no. You are actively doing recreational drugs. You have not slept in days. You are on antipsychotic medication. You are also taking hormone treatment. You're taking male hormones. Yeah. So this in the medical profession, we would say is a lot going on, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that is good for you. You need to, I can't believe I'm going to say this. You need to find a way to get in touch with yourself because you are trying to medicate for a situation which medicine maybe cannot treat. I kind of get what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe a therapist. That's a third one. You see, Lugash <laughs> slams a meaty hand in your back. <laughs> um, and one of them sort of pops out. Uh, ah. He looks at you uh, and goes, Look, I'm going to go and try to get a stomach pump because you're going to straight up go insane if you process those mushrooms. I'm going to do right back. All right, thank you. Um, Lugash leaves the room. <laughs> Uh, make a uh, perception check for me, if you'd be so kind. Uh, good. Uh, 17 plus, uh, what else is perception? Uh, oh, no, no addition. So 17. Um, you look up, um, and you're just sort of being annoyed because it's like there's a drip in here. I mean, it's kind of like a dingy old building. But you just be like... Uh, you look over in the corner and you see it. there is a radiator which is dripping a drop of water up and it's hitting the ceiling. Righteous. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see that um, a puddle slowly starts to form on the ceiling of the water dripping out of the radiator. And in a reflection of that ceiling puddle, you see that there's like a little New York public health poster on the wall. And the reflection of the kind of healthy, sport, like sporty guy in a park turns to look at you and says, hey Pete, the reflection in the ceiling goes, how's it going? I'm real. It's going, honestly, I feel like I can be really honest with you. I, I miss her <laughs> and, I, and I deleted her number out of my phone, but then I found it in our early Instagram exchanges and I re-added it and uh, I, I've already texted her this morning. Okay, magic's real. Everything's about to change for you. Has, do you think she read the text or do you think like I should? Uh, the door Whoa. opens and you see <laughs> Blue gosh comes back in. Um, hey, where'd you go? <laughs> okay, this is not great, mm -hmm. right? Peter, listen, mostly what I do here is I pull bullets out of gangsters that have been shot. Yeah. That's like my number one thing. In a way, I was kind of shot. I like not shot really. my ass <laughs> off. <laughs> I will admit, I will admit it was my first time doing top surgery. You did a great job. I don't think you left that much stuff in there that you should have. I, I, it's a little bit bumpy on this side, but I think yeah, it's sure. kind of cool. Well, I'm very excited to do it. You might imagine there's not a lot in my line of work. There's not a, a chance to prove I am a LGBT ally, so it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, I am worried about you. You need to get rest. Oh, yeah, you man. need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. You need to heal. Be careful out there today. Oh, remember, by the way, he's, uh, I would say go get rest because also it's going to be a crazy day for you, right? Because SantaCon is happening today, right? <sighs> yeah, you're right, and they're going to want a lot of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Are people still doing a lot of cocaine? Just the Santas. They're stuck in the 90s. Ugh. Oh, these are mostly people from Hoboken. And mm -hmm. yes. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's like 10 years in the past yeah. over on that side of the river. Right? What yeah. are you going to do? All right, well, listen, one of my clients has just gotten into a violent car accident, so I need to go make a house call. Uh, cool. uh, be safe, Peter. Yeah, right? thank you so much, doctor. I'll see you. Uh, he nods. Um, <laughs> What a great doctor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, you head out. As you can see, the yearly cluster that is SantaCon, where a bunch of 
college kids dress up in Santa outfits and go on a crazy pub crawl and make New York virtually unlivable for a day <laughs> has already kind of begun. I, I imagine you just head back to your apartment at this point. Um, Definitely, yeah, back to bed. Cool. Um, you get back to your apartment on the train. Oh, what do you think Pete's doing on the train as he's going? It's like an above ground train a little bit getting away from there. Uh, I'm just listening to music. Uh, probably listening to like an old Little Wayne album. <laughs> <laughs> Little text pops up on your work phone uh, from Seven saying, price of the brick r went up, LOL. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I say like, yeah, we'll take care of it. Uh. Um, you arrive back at your apartment, uh, a little bit deeper into Greenpoint. Um, go ahead and make another perception check for me. Eleven. Uh, you walk up uh, to the apartment. You live in a spare room that is functionally a converted walk-in closet. You walk into the apartment and see Marta, who is this very old, like, 60s, 70s Polish woman, uh, got a little sort of babushka around her head, and her early 20s grandson, Yagdash. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he's got like a chin strap beard, very thick eyebrows, he's got like a windbreaker. He's like a sort of wannabe gangster kind of guy. You walk into the apartment and you see that a bunch of your stuff is in boxes. Marta turns around. Okay, so I got, I found the proof. And you see she takes a weird little plastic bag that's empty. She's like, I know what this is. You deal drugs out of the apartment. What? No, no, what are you talking about? You are a bad boy, chick. you do this? No, no, that is uh, from a pen. That's dry ink from a pen, they do that now here. Uh, dry ink from a pen, uh -huh. you are a drug dealer. No, All right, you no. school you around? I work at the school. Everyone? What you do, you wear a cowboy hat? I work at the school. <laughs> You no, know, you, I see you eat the dragon from your coat right there! That was a snack! You are a bad influence on Yadash! Talking about? No, Yadash, Yadash, look, I work at the school, right, man? You see, Yadash looks at you and goes, I thought you were a drug dealer. No! <laughs> no! The, remember, the point is I'm how much you're not a drug dealer I am. But I'm supposed to buy drugs from you later! No! For a party! <clears throat> you, we're going to club! I don't. Do, are you hearing him say all this? She's not mad at you. <laughs> My sweet grandson, young yeah, dad, should never. <laughs> he would never do this. Look, I don't sell drugs, I promise. You, I find out you're, I find out from this that you are bad. I know you are no good because you come in, you have the crazy hair, and you have the cowboy hat. my hair. You're a crazy boy. No. So now you're going to be out on the street. No, no, come on. Your father is here. What? You haven't seen your father in six years or something like that. Um, and you hear a set of footsteps walking off this, walking up the stairs. What? Uh, the door opens and you see your dad, Mitch, standing in the doorway. What the? Mitch! What are you doing here? You gonna call me Mitch? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, your dad has not seen you in so Um, had a hard time finding you. He goes, picks up one of the boxes of your stuff and just starts to carry it down the stairs. And you, it's like, it has a special box of yours in it that you definitely need. Okay, hey, put that down, put it, come on. What is going on? He just on? continues down. I follow him. Um, he goes down the steps and he's like, well, eventually we had to pay a private eye to track you down. How did they find me? I don't, what? No way. What do you mean no way? I, I'm too good. No one can find me. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Um, you see your dad turns around. Uh, he, he's like not really making eye contact with you. It's like super weird and up. Turns around and says, we knew you had to be in New York. We knew you weren't, you know, left upstate, dropped out of school. We want you to come home, okay? No. What's so great about this place? I, I saw a bunch of bums driving on the way in. It's dirty as hell. Yeah. 
Exactly. I can't go and live on like a farm where there's like, I'm the only trans person anyone's ever met in their life. That's okay. I, I, I don't want to talk about that. You're doing right? the weird chicken dance that you do whenever. You see, he looks at you. Uh, you start to feel something weird as like emotions kick up in you. you. That feeling of like going over a bump in a road really fast where your stomach starts to rise and you feel a little bit weightless it is starting to happen to you a little bit. Cool. Um, you see that he looks at you and goes, it's not a conversation. He goes to say your dead name and he goes, and a bunch of bubbles come out of his mouth and he starts looking around. Uh, and just tons of bubbles start issuing out of him and they go into his clothes and around him and start lifting him up into the air as he like flails his arms and your dad is surrounded by bubbles and sails off into the sky. <laughs> Yeah, I grab my box, I go back inside and try to uh, live there. Uh, <laughs> you, end of campaign. Um, you take a step in, um, uh, and you, uh, uh, as you take a step in, you're feeling you've never had a high like this before. You bump into someone, and you hear them say, hey, watch it. You turn around, and a trash can with two little eyeballs on top flaps its lid, it goes, Problem was standing right here by the doorway. Who needs some kind of piece of shit? Okay. I need to take an upper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you see that uh, two of the other trash cans turn around and say, Oh, whoa, is this guy bothering you, dude? I don't know. You trying to start some trouble? No. If we weren't already outside, I'd ask if you want to go outside. Uh, no, man. You're just a trash can. Uh, oh, you're I'm just, just a trash can. You're just, and a, you're trash just a piece can. of shit. No. You kids like you move in the f***ing neighborhood, you sell drugs, you make crime happen, you're a real piece of buddy. I run. Uh, you take <laughs> off down the street, you've got your box in your hand. Um, uh, go ahead and make a dexterity check for me. Uh, eight? Um, you go and you're running, and as you look down, you're running through a little like melted area of snow, and you look down and see that everything else but you has a reflection in the puddle. And at that exact second, you fall into the puddle. All of a sudden, you are standing on the other side of the puddle in a uh, snow-covered New York where snow is issuing out of the storm drains in the street and flying up into a sky full of endless stars. This sky is more stars than it is darkness. It is nighttime here. Uh, you see that a full moon turns around to you uh, and you see that there is a beautiful woman in the moon, incredible eyeshadow, full lips, turns and says, holy this is crazy. I'll say. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want to take a look around? <laughs> this enormous moonbeam collides with the ground at your feet, uh, and you are raised up on it and see an endless dreamscape of New York City stretching around you. Um, a unicorn rushes past you. Uh, that is, you see the unicorn is sparkling, but you can tell has also put glitter on itself. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, what are you doing here? Sugar, are you new to this place? Something tells me you're real as hell. Yeah. Wow, that is something else. I am loving this. Uh, okay. You, uh, <laughs> when you slap yourself, you fall through the moonbeam, and you see that as you're falling, this insane owl, pigeon, monkey, angel thing, like a weird, it looks like a huge, like eight foot tall monkey with a pair of wings on its back and an owl's face starts flying around you and says, he's back, he's back, he's back, and grabs your face and gives you a weird beaky kiss and says, I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Woo. Uh, you land on the ground and it's very like weird bouncy cloud. Um, and you see that there is a little rat 
with a slice of pizza strapped to its back like a hiker. And you see, he goes, holy sh you're here. That's incredible. Thank you. For sure. Uh, where am I? I don't know, where do you want to be? <laughs> okay. Okay, something else was in those shrooms, I think. I think, uh... <laughs> um, what is Peter feeling right now? Uh, insane. Like, this is crazy. Uh, I think I'm just like... Where did my dad float off to? Like, yeah. As I'm soon like... as you think of your dad, you see a little thing of bubbles with him sailing off in this dream realm, and suddenly you drop through the cloud and are in inky blackness and you hear whispers all around you. Oh, he's gone, we have him now. You'll never have to worry about him again. We can make things that are unreal real, and we can make things real unreal. Whatever you want, do you want this power? Your med bracelet starts to glow on your hand, and a little, like, happy face appears on it, throbbing like a button you could press. Is this DMT? <laughs> <laughs> I think about pressing it. Uh, it. <laughs> um, you hear a colossal rending, and the entire darkness splits above you, and the silvery stars and white clouds <laughs> pour through and you can feel things screaming with joy as they escape from whatever realm this is. You suddenly feel yourself being drawn into deeper darkness. You hear a voice. A single point of golden light. Bright gold burning with intensity. You start to feel your real body sweating and your heart rate picking up. Start spreading the news. <laughs> I'm leaving today. I want to. A rectangle of golden light in burning lines superimposed against inky blackness forever beyond it appears before you and the burning singes your skin and your eyes. I want to be a part of it. You suddenly feel yourself dropping again and a little gray child's face with inky black eyes appears in front of you as black tears go down its gray face. What the f are you doing to me, man? <laughs> and says, uh, you wanted to be a wild magic sorcerer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and looks at you and goes, it's happening. I'm so sorry. Heed the words of Lazarus before it's too late. <sighs> Disappears. You are in an alleyway surrounded by SantaCon people. I wish I had a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see that uh, one of the Santa kind of people turns over to you and half of his face melts and he just goes ho, 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 and bites the side of your head. No, 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 no. <laughs> Great. And we're going to move on to our next PC. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Wonderful. Christ. Jesus. What a way to start. <laughs> Oh my God. That was trippy. I'm like, there there's a go. lot of tension being released right now. Oh my God. <laughs> Hell yeah. Should we All take right. five? Jesus, yeah, I need to like yeah. splash uh, myself with cold water. Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah, we're gonna roll another little dice here. Gray faced child. Uh, a little bit of snow kicks up and goes across the harbor, past the Statue of Liberty, swirling through the giant cables of the Verrazano Bridge, all the way to Staten Island, where we see uh, a nice little hair salon, first-class luxury beauty salon. Uh, 
We see that there is a woman sitting in a chair. Uh, she's got the sort of little smock over her. Uh, and there is a woman uh, styling her hair right now. Emily, could you please describe your character to us? Okay, um, my name is Sophia Lee. Uh, I'm sorry, no, it is Sophia Bicicleta. Um, I was Sophia Lee for five beautiful years, but then my husband, Dale, left me. Um, so now I'm back to Sophia Bicicleta. Um, Sophia Bikes, you might hear me be called. Um, I'm, you know, I, I suppose I can have like a bit of a hot temper. Um, Dale really balanced me out, but now that he's gone, I'm on a little bit of a bender. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that's fine. I mean, I can keep up an active lifestyle. I, similar to Pete, I haven't been sleeping because the uh, bed I was sleeping in, I once shared with my husband. Um, so I just don't even really like being there right now. Um, and basically, I'm in like a tight leopard print skirt, uh, a tight pink cami, and... <laughs> Basically, I look like if Fran Drescher went on like an Amy Winehouse bender. <laughs> oh, yes. Um. And I'm doing a pretty bad job because I'm pretty hungover. <laughs> um, you see the woman in the chair is trying to make small talk with you, she says. And honestly, I couldn't believe it because the house is a disaster. Like they really? Want, oh, it's awful. Well, they painted it this shade of like, I don't know, lime green. It looks like it's St. Patrick's I Day. I tell you, day. everyone on this island has too much money they don't even know what to do with. Uh, well, that's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't take a lot of money to be classy. Like I, I don't know, understand but why these- everyone just gets bored. So they just, they're like, well, I can't buy a bigger house because then it'll be obvious I'm in the mob. So I guess I'll just paint my house a new shade of lime green. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Sophie, no. No, 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 it's fine. I really want to keep doing your hair. I got to get it teased. I honestly, I honestly, and <gasps> Soph, I've been coming to you for my hair for three years now. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to, you know, you've fully cut my bangs down to about a quarter <laughs> of an inch. There. Did you not want baby bangs? <laughs> Well, the thing is that they're like a bristle now, so it really sort of looks like I'm some kind of, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a discount. I am. A di okay, discount, okay, Tell you what, yes. give, me, sure. give me your little, uh, give me your little uh, uh, coupon and I'll-, I'll Oh, my punch card? My yeah, little, give me your punch card and I'll punch out a couple extra. You, honestly, you're a doll, and honestly, it's so up what happens, and like, God forbid anything would've happened to me and Bobby, but, Okay, I don't think you need to bring in you and Bobby just because me and Dale fell apart and we wouldn't have fallen apart if Isabella Infierno didn't come over the bridge or wherever she came from. God, okay, look, I understand. <sighs> look, everyone knows she's a All right, it is. Okay, okay, I don't know that we should be putting down other women that much. Oh. She's a succubus is what she is. <laughs> Witchcraft is the only thing that's gonna take Dale away from me. Yes, we had our fights. <sighs> Usually my fault, because he was just so even-tempered. Sophie. All he wanted to do was just watch the deer in the backyard. <laughs> he just watched deer in the backyard? <laughs> he, loved, <laughs> he, he loved it when we had a couple animals that would come in and out of the backyard and he just liked watching them. Sophie, look. He was I a very calming presence. I love you to death. Everybody in the neighborhood when you went and married Dale, he's not from around here. People know, here marry people right. from here, all right? I know, and, and I nobody, don't want someone from here. And nobody wants to say, I told you so. Nobody wants to say that. So here's <laughs> what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna settle up with you for today. We're gonna stop it here. I'm gonna go look at some No, ads. I can fix the bangs, I can. I just, a couple more snips and I think they'll be fixed. Okay, I'm looking at it now and it looks like like those old medieval monks, it looks like one's just shifted forward about five inches to cut off the front part. Right, okay, it's not my best work, but um, do you want to free God, me? God, and I understand what you're going through. If I let any more of this happen to myself, I'm accountable for it, right? Okay. I've already spoken up and I need to interject. Do you want some pre-made sangria? I've got some in the fridge. <laughs> he looks over, you see like a bunch of like barbicide supplies that need to be kept cold have been removed from this fridge to have a giant pitcher of sangria. Yeah. Um, you see, she says, okay, it's uh, it's 10.30 in the morning. I know, I sh exercise some restraint at 8 a.m. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what, I'll have a little bit of sangria. Okay. The door 
uh, sort of like jingles, and your brother Mario walks in. What do you want? How's it going, Soph? Jesus, what the fuck's wrong with this lady's hair? <laughs> <laughs> Problem. This looks oh, like shit. oh, Mario, like you know anything about women's fashion? I happen to know a lot. Just because my fashion line went down in flames doesn't mean I don't know about no fashion. No one wants alligator skin anymore. When you say hurtful stuff like that, that's right how I know you're in an emotional spot. Know, Alligator okay. skin has been, uh, is, all right, fashion is cyclical, you f***ing stugats, all right? Okay. I'm gonna okay. lose my temper. Okay, okay, everyone keep, everyone keep it together. Here's what I wanna say. Mm. Mom would like you to come by for dinner at some point, all right? This is yeah. the fucking olive branch. I know, I know, I know. Yes, I will. I will come by at some point. I don't know what my night is like tonight. How about this? How about this Sunday? Sunday. All right. Oh, if I show up, am I going to be guilted for not going to church because it's Sunday? I mean, would it kill you to go to church? I don't understand, right? It's like you marry some guy who's not from the neighborhood and then you're not going to church and, you know. Don't bring him into this. You didn't know him. Look, I don't know him, but I know Isabella and Fierno. All right, and... Oh, my God. You know what? Do you want Better. me to start running my mouth about alligator skin again? Because I will. It <laughs> is a it is a USA business. You can farm alligator leather in the States. It is ethical, and I don't give a to myself to you. We'll see you Sunday or not, all right? Jesus. Uh, you see, he turns and leaves. Um, you... Don't forget to pay the meter! <laughs> uh, uh, you... Uh, leave uh, after your shift is done, you settle up. Um, it's getting to be that time of year where Christmas music is starting to be played around. Oh God damn. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just that time of year again. Uh, you're feeling extremely hungover and sobriety is starting to wend its way back into the corners of your brain. Okay, well, I have two options, because if I don't get a drink right now, I'm probably gonna go buy more Christmas presents for Dale like he's gonna come back. So I guess I'm gonna go to a bar. <laughs> um, you head up to a bar. Um, go ahead and roll a wisdom uh, uh, saving throw for me. Saving? Mm -hmm. Ooh. 21. 21, cool. So you get the out of here. You don't go to any of the places on Staten Island that would remind you of Dale. You don't go to any places here. You hop on the ferry. You head into the city. Wind in my hair. Uh, you maybe like pregame on the ferry a little yeah, yeah. bit. Um, Corona. <laughs> oh, girl, one of those Coronitas. <laughs> um, you arrive. Uh, you arrive in the city. Uh, what kind of bar are you looking for here? Honestly, just like one with like as many people as possible or like one, maybe one that like a bunch of people are by themselves, so I don't have to feel weird for being by myself. Cool. So you find some dingy Irish bar somewhere in the city, uh, old wood table, you sit at it, um, you start uh, having your drinks. Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw for me. <laughs> 16. Hell yeah. Uh, you're, you're holding your own. You're able to, you're going a nice couple of rounds. Uh, this bartender, Sean, is looking at you. He's kind of like a scruffy bartender guy. He's like, you know, late 30s. Um, hey, uh, how's it going, miss? What can I get you? Um, can I get a, a Stoli Raz with seltzer and a twist? Yeah, I can do that for you, no problem. Okay. Um, uh, he goes over- That's and, raspberry. Yeah, well, I assumed, yeah, okay. I assumed, yeah. Um, you see, he, he has, this, is, this place is close enough to the ferry that it has every flavor of Stoli. Um, <laughs> you see, uh, does the Stoli Raz, puts the twist in it, seltzer, puts it in front of you. Um, and he says, hey, uh, I like that, uh, there was an Angora, it's a nice little, or, uh, nice little sweater you got there. Oh, thank you, yeah, it is Angora, it is uh, authentic. You guys got like a, a Kindle behind the bar or something that I could read? You want to read an e-reader? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I just, uh, I just don't entirely know how to interact with people right now. Uh, you see, he he nods. Um, you see that uh, there's a couple guys at the end of the bar. They got like striped shirts, very 
like spiky frost, or not some one of them's frosted, but like spiky hair, sort of chains. You see that one of them looks over to you and says, "Oh, you want to read something?" <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how that could be a pickup line because it sounds like the beginning of one. Um, yes, maybe. Why don't you read my? D oh, Woo! okay. Because I had considered maybe it was going to go in that direction, and then I thought, no, he's better than that. No, I'm not going to read your. <laughs> you see, the one that says, like, Come because on. I don't read short stories. Thank oh, you. Oh, you. Thank you. Uh, you see that everyone in the bar. I jump up on the bar. Everyone in the bar goes nuts for that. Jump <laughs> on the bar. Uh, cool. You are the hero of the bar at that point. Um, uh, you stay there for a while. You're, you're there, honestly. On you're there for like hours. Um, uh, you don't read short stories. <laughs> I don't read short stories. Not at all. <laughs> Um, after a while, it's like I would say it's like you know 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. You've been here for a couple hours, mm -hmm. uh, and you're having a ball. That burn was so great. The bartender's been yeah. hooking up with free drinks. Go ahead. You've been here for I'll say like four hours. Go ahead and give me four Constitution saving throws. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, first two are <laughs> twenty-one and a twelve. Cool. The next two are nine and a twelve. Nine? I am getting drunker though. <laughs> you are know. getting drunker. Yeah, it's getting to that point. Um, uh, you see, you're having a ball, and a huge bachelorette party uh, comes into the bar. Um, you see, they're all going, "Woo, Tina! Yeah, Tina!" And they get to the far. I see one of them says, "Like, um, the br the, the bride to be will have a slippery nipple shot." Oh my God, there's barely any alcohol in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see Sean walks over to the bartender and says, hey, uh, uh, it's, it's all right. This is a lot of business coming in. You don't got Yeah, it. no, you're totally right, Sean. I'm so sorry. <sighs> you okay? Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, sometimes you lose the person that balances you out and you're a bit unhinged. Let's get you some whiskey, huh? You want a shot of whiskey? You got any of the stuff that tastes like Christmas, the, like cinnamon and fire? <laughs> um, he does that. Go ahead and give me uh, a, a, a constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Oh. I got oh. I got an 18 still, but I did get a nat 20. Oh. <laughs> cool. Uh, that Christmas shot goes down real smooth, real easy. Um, uh, you have this Christmassy shot. Gives me a clear head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you see that uh, the maid of honor clearly raises glass and says, Tina, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, your life is all laid out ahead of you, and you're building it in this moment, and honestly, there is not a better guy than Richard for you. We're so happy you found the one. It is smooth sailing from here on out. But there's one last night of choppy water! Yeah. I just want to say something. Um, All the whole bachelor party turns to look at you. Um, sorry, can I borrow this old karaoke machine? Thanks, I uh, mic it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I just want to tell you, uh, Tina, that uh, marriage was the best thing that ever happened to me. And you have a lot to look forward to. And, you know, I hope he makes you a slippery nipple every night before you go to bed. <laughs> I do. I really do. Start spreading the news. <laughs> uh, you see that really they stop you. Uh, uh, the bachelorette, all of the, the bachelor party comes over and is like, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome. Uh, and you see, your vision kind of goes a little fuzzy for a second. Those three guys at the end of the bar you saw earlier, you s you're getting a little punch drunk from the alcohol. I guess just drunk. Uh, <laughs> and you look over and you swear to God, these guys are like 10 feet tall. And their skin is this like mottled green, almost like weird vegetative or something. And they have these like long noses covered in warts. And they're all kind of laughing and uh, looking at each other. And you see that two of the bachelorette party uh, are basically are like, uh, you want to go outside for a cigarette? Yeah, let's go outside. And you see they walk outside. And you see the three hulking people that, again, your vision's kind of up. 
turn to follow these women outside after the bar. Oh no, I don't think so. If these are choppy waters, consider me their lifesaver. <laughs> and I stomp out. And I'm gonna follow them. Um, you follow them. Uh, you see that the uh, two women hook around into a little alleyway near this dumpster. They're just smoking real quick. They're doing that thing where they're like dressed very cute, but it's freezing outside, so they're just like shivering and smoking. Uh, and you catch the first line of one of these. Again, what is Sophia thinking as she sees these like hulking monstrous? I think she's just going through the thing where she's like, oh my God, I have been drinking so much that sometimes like I am just, I feel like I'm seeing things. The other morning I woke up in an alley and I could swear that like a giant rat man brought me like a, a egg sandwich and a Gatorade to like help me sober <laughs> up. So like, I'm definitely, I'm definitely killing some brain cells, but you know what? You gotta kill some to kill the ones that have the memories of Dale on them. <laughs> um, so yeah, if this means that some men look like the uh, creepy 10 foot tall gray skin men from now on, that's fine with me as long as I can forget Dale's aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see that one of these hulking, weird wart covered giants looks over at one of these uh, young women uh, and goes, hey, uh, can I bum a cigarette from you? You guys, uh, seems like you got a real party going on in there. And you see he puts a giant clawed hand on the small of her back. Okay, all right, <laughs> that's not a part that we touch on women. Hi, uh, it's me, Sophia Le Bicicleta. <laughs> I was in there on the karaoke machine earlier. I'll also take a cigarette and I smush myself in between the guy. <laughs> Um, you see that, as you switch yourself in there, you see that um, uh, there is something around these giant troll people that's like these wisps of almost like heat waves on a hot day or some kind of like wispy bit of like their shadow peeling off of them in little flickers. It almost looks like a very subtle fire or a smoke or something. And as you wedge in and touch one, you see that the haze around them actually disappears. And the th three of them look and see that you're looking at their eyes where their eyes actually are. And they all kind of look at each other and look back at you. And you see that the two women uh, quickly like stamp out their cigarettes uh, and walk, like sort of side away from you, and you see that the three tall, for all intents and purposes, trolls, turn to you and say, you got a problem, lady? Yeah, I got a problem. <sighs> what are you doing with those women? Well, Cause to... I do not consider you the type to walk around without a cigarette. You see, they look around at each other and they say, well, um, you know, that's on us, I guess. That cigarette tax is no joke, though. That's true. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they look at you and say, well, maybe we can bum one off of you. What do you think? I actually don't smoke. Um, you see that uh, one of these guys rears back a clawed hand to take a swing at you. All right. Um, I, uh, I trip him. Uh, go ahead and- Wait, really? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead real quick. I'll make a, uh, just make a dexterity check for me to see if you can beat him to the punch. Okay. Got a nat one. <laughs> nat one. Um, <laughs> Best real roll of the exactly. game. Uh, this guy, uh, uh, this guy clocks you in the head no. for, uh, I'm gonna use my little dice box. Uh, Siobhan made dice boxes for everybody. Yes. Yay. Um, I'll show mine later. Uh, um, uh, this guy clocks you for um, uh, 12 points of damage. Uh, and I need you to make another constitution saving throw for me. Jesus. 14. Cool. Um, cool, go ahead and make your attacks on it. Okay, first off I'd like to tell him that hurt, but probably not as much as my burn earlier. And then <laughs> I'm gonna attack him. Go for it. Mm, does 15 hit? 15 does hit. Ooh, all right. Uh, that's gonna be 10. And then I'm gonna take my stiletto off 
and <laughs> thwack them for another seven. Ooh, awesome. And then I'm gonna spend a key point to <laughs> thwack them again. I'm up. Flurry of blows for another six. Six, seven, and what else? Sorry? 10. Six, <laughs> seven, and 10. 17, 23 points of damage. Um, this guy, bam, knocks you in the head. You come out, your like, nice hairdo is a little bit messed up. Um, uh, tell me exactly what happens to this <laughs> troll. <laughs> All right, I would like to take off both my stilettos and just put them through his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you go whap, um, uh, into this guy's eyes. So he goes Wah! and just runs down the street, bumping into <laughs> And the two trolls run after him. Going, Holy sh Vin, are you okay? Man, I got shoes in my eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leave that bachelorette alone. She's uh. got a really happy life ahead of her. <laughs> um, Sophia, you are shoeless. You Again. Are, you are definitely concussed. Mm. Um, you feel yourself kind of like drop and like fall against the wall outside the bar and sort of slump down into a very soft, warm trash bag. Um, it's nice. Oh, it feels like someone threw out a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sophia goes to sleep. Mm. On to our next PC. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Um, see who goes next. Uh, a bit of snow whisks off of the trash as Sophia pulls that sort of other uh, garbage bag uh, onto herself for <laughs> warmth. Uh, and we go all the way off across the East River uh, into Cobble Hill, Brooklyn, where we come down and there's a little four-story stone building, railroad apartments, uh, classic New York apartment building, and we hear Woo! Uh, as a raging inferno melts the snow overhead. The third and fourth story of this building are engulfed in flames. Uh, we see uh, out the window, uh, looking through a set of bars. There are bars to keep the, the, the window safe uh, for kids being in that space. There is a little eight-year-old girl with a little bit of soot and smoke on her face. She's clutching a little a teddy bear in her hand, looking at the bar and yelling down. You see that there's uh, paramedics and firefighters and cops down there saying, don't worry, we're a little girl. We're gonna get you out of this. Stay close to the window. Keep your head down out of the smoke. You see, she goes, I'm scared, I'm scared. <laughs> With an eruption of force, the door of the room boom, explodes into cinders. Zach, could you describe your character for us? Uh, I'm uh, Ricky Matsui. I'm a, f a firefighter in New York, uh, specifically in Brooklyn. Uh, I believe I'm just doing the right thing. And I, I always wanted to be a firefighter, so I accomplished that goal. So feeling really good about myself. I'm pretty much set for life, I guess. Um, <laughs> and I'm just here to help. Um, Ricky, you survey the area here. You see that there is a barred window. There's a uh, little girl near these bars of the window. It's like a nursery room in here. Uh, you see that two of your other firefighter pals uh, have just busted down the door into a room with what looks like the girl's primary caretaker, who's her grandmother. Um, she turns around and look at you, uh, and she goes, <gasps> are you a firefighter? I am. <laughs> uh, what's Ricky do? Ricky, um, first Ricky's like, that's a really cool bear. <laughs> What's his name? His name's Theo. All right, hold on to Theo real tight, and then I'm gonna pick you up, and we're all just gonna have a fun time getting out of here. <laughs> See? Uh, an emanating warmth of, to say that it's holy often conjures connotations of like a, a religion, but a holy light made out of just civic responsibility <laughs> and a love of safety emanates from Ricky Matsui. And you see that the girl wipes the tears from her eyes and says, okay, we're gonna be all right, little guy. She says it to her teddy bear uh, and runs up and leaps into your arms. Uh, 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 what does Ricky Matsui look like, by the way? Oh, Ricky Matsui is, uh, he is like, He's like 5'8", but like really strong. <laughs> he just works out a lot. He believes in, you know, you, you just keep your body right to keep your mind right. Uh, it's the cheapest therapy he can have working out. Uh, 
He uh, he picks the girl up with just one arm, and he uh, he you know he yeah he's like kind of like a Superman ish if he were Japanese, <laughs> uh, and he's just ready to get out of there. Yeah. Um, Roll cheapest therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you rush out. Um, as you're running, something sort of tingles in your mind, in the corner of your consciousness, and you can feel moments before it happened. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, dexterity saving throw for me. Ooh, 12 plus uh, 13. 13. Um, you see that a boom beam, a burning beam, falls down behind you. You feel it about to happen a second before it happens. You jump, tumble, somersault with the girl holding on to her in your arms. She's holding on to her bear. There is now a burning obstacle in the way between your friends who are getting the grandmother. Uh, who will maybe not be able to make it out past this beam that is now obstructing the hallway. I uh, make sure no one's watching, and then I create water on the burning beam. <laughs> um, there is a little girl in your arms. Oh, yes. I, uh, I say, look out the window real fast. Uh, <laughs> she looks out the window real fast. Um, you channel the power within you. Your fireman's axe, the questing blade at your side, glows bright and a geyser blast of water erupts from your outstretched hand. Uh, coats the beam, uh, the, the water corrodes it, the fire beats into it, and it snaps in half and clears the hallway. Hey, something happened. What was the window like? Oh, the window? It was normal, I think, normal. That's Did awesome. You... <laughs> uh, you make it out of here. You can hear your firefighter brothers behind you. Um, you make it down to the sidewalk and you emerge from the smoke and you see that there is an eruption of cheers as the grandma and the girl comes out in your arms. You see that there's a New York One van there and a New York One reporter comes up who's in the middle of the broadcast. And she says, Sir, sir, you've just got, uh, amazingly saved a young girl's life in this burning building. Um, uh, thank you, on behalf of the city, thank you so much. Uh, uh, is that the last, are those the last people in the building right now? And holds the... The other people got out already? The other people got out already, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, everyone at home, if you're watching this, make sure that your sprinklers are up to date, that you have fire <laughs> extinguishers, that you're always taking the precautions you need to keep your home safe. Um, we, we got lucky this time. Uh, make sure that you're just keeping up with that. Am I on TV right now? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is for New York Month, so we're awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, what's up, Mom? What's up, Dad? Uh, Emiko, hey, what's going on? Uh, just want to say, you know, uh, holidays are a tough time for uh, Christmas trees. Uh, you know, you want to make sure you're safe with that. God, I'm just not used to being on TV right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you see, she says, "Oh, that's that, that's okay. I think we have. I think we got. Good? I think we got what we needed. Awesome. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, was that?" Did you want me to keep talking? No, I, no you're good. You're fully good. Thank I'm you good? so much. You're awesome. fully good. Uh, again, the heroic job. Just stand uh, behind her. <laughs> <laughs> heroic job from the from the uh, you know you're, you can, from the I New York Fire Department, here? FDNY. Yep. Uh -huh. Heroic job. Um, obviously, you know the fire has been contained. So I'm just, we'll just move the shot over here. Move the shot over here. Um, follow you. Follow you. No, you're good. You're fully right. good, sir. Thank you so much. Um, what kind of cameras? <laughs> Um, uh, you reunite the little girl. Um, uh, the, re uh, the little girl looks up at you, um, uh, and you see she's holding her bear as you reunite her with her grandmother. The grandmother says, thank you so much. You saved our life. You saved my little girl. You are a hero. Ah, I mean, you know, I'm just doing... You March. You're Mr. March from the fireman's calendar. Yes, I, uh... I have, I have posted wow. our, our calendar. Uh, it's made. Do you want me to I'll oh, sign I, it if you want? I guess. Oh, you see that she uh, says, yes, I made sure to grab it on the way out. And you see there's a singed. You grabbed it? I grabbed it. I made the firefighters go back into the kitchen. Okay, well, um, just make sure to, to keep safe. Uh, wow. I'm not as tan as I used to be. <laughs> I've got to work on that. <laughs> uh, you see, she closes and says, you're a real, uh, you're a real hunky number in here. Ooh. Thank you, ma'am. Five alarms, no kidding. <laughs> hey, um, I just show her my ass. <laughs> <laughs> she crying a little bit. You are really a hero. Oh, thank you, ma'am. 
Um, this old uh, woman. The little girl is, looks a little bit confused. Uh, you feel a little ping in your phone, um, but the girl looks up at you with a little bit of confusion as she says, um, she says, I looked at the window, but Theo didn't. You made that w big log stop burning, right? You know, sometimes firefighters use all, all their tools on their belt. And some of it is confusing to, to children. Uh, You're a wizard. I'm not a wizard. <laughs> um, oh, it's okay. Hey, can you keep a secret? I'll keep a secret. Only me and Theo will know. Okay. Yeah, I kind of got some magic in me. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> ah! He screams and runs around in a little circle. Um, your phone uh, pings again, um, and you see that it's another, uh, you look at your phone, see that it's a couple of texts from Esther, who is uh, the head of the uh, Clinton Hill Chantry. Um, and she uh, is texting you and says, uh, need to meet up ASAP, uh, SantaCon today, a uh, couple of points to cover, would love your help if available. I send her a selfie of me with the fire. I'm like, just finishing up here on the way. Uh, how you doing? Uh, never, never mind. I'll see you in a sec. <laughs> uh, you get a couple of ellipses and then just the word "good." <laughs> uh, cool. Um, uh, do you, how do, how does uh, uh, Ricky get over to the chantry? Uh, how far is that? Um, it's not, from here it's not too far. It's, the, the train lines aren't great just going sprints. from two sprints. <laughs> yeah, so Ricky just like gets up, like sprints down the street, and you get up onto the rooftops and are just bounding over the rooftops of New York. Uh, this ax glinting in the sun. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you arrive, um, <sighs> at the Clinton Hill Chantry, which is a lovely little brownstone in a very beautiful ivy-covered part of Brooklyn. Um, and uh, you see that the door has this sort of gargoyle, one of those like bronze knockers that has like a gargoyle biting the little knocker ring on it. Uh, and do you approach the door? Uh, what do you do when you get to the door? I, um, I address the gargoyle and say, how's it going, Frank? <laughs> you know, it's been better, uh, say, I gotta tell you, man, it's good this, this time of the year, the heat and the cold, you know, the metal expands sure. and contracts. I can feel myself busting my fat through the wood Whoa. of the doors. <laughs> you know? I bet you, man, you're looking good. I'm trying to get on that metal level, you know? <laughs> <laughs> feel good it, feel it. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's great, man. How's your mom? She's good. She's good. My whole family's great. I mean, you know, a lot of people got problems. Oh, for sure. Hey, but, uh, believe me, I, I know. <laughs> for me, hey, for me, but hey, you know, but hey, you gotta count out your blessings, right? Mm -hmm. You can move around. I'm stuck in the door. So totally. I... <laughs> if you ever want me to bring you any kind of treats or any kind of sandwiches or anything, actually, yeah. You if you if you're not busy right now, they're doing. You know, there's this place down away, Gianella's. They do like a chicken palm. If you wanted to grab one, I wouldn't yeah. mind that. I can bring it to you later. I kind of got to go in there, and I'm sorry I'm about busy. it. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the door swings open. Uh, you walk in. This is one of those areas of New York where it's like, there's this like sense of old, distinguished parlors and rooms, with very sort of, you know, uh, dusty, leather-bound books everywhere, little glass case with some strange swirled staff in it. And you see that there's still some uh, painter's tape over the glass case that your questing blade shot out of when you rescued these wizards from a fire about like 11 months ago. Uh, you see Esther walks out. Esther is a very cool young wizard in her 20s. Um, she's got like uh, an undercut and a little bit of her hair coming over to one side. Uh, uh, she's got like a bunch of jewelry and uh, you know, very like kind of wizard chic where it's like bangles and jewels and rings that do stuff. Uh, but then also just sort of wearing a pair of jeans and some high boots. Um, you see uh, Esther uh, turns to you and says, oh Ricky, good, you made it here in record time. Um, well, you know, if you go over the buildings, it's a lot quicker. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I keep saying this, but it's awesome haircut. It's awesome. Thank you. It's so cool. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, it's, you know, just to like to keep it new and exciting. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about SantaCon and what's going to be happening today. Awesome. Um, have I, because you came in here about 11 months ago, so you missed the last SantaCon, right? Sure, this is my first SantaCon since I saw the magic stuff. Uh, you see, um, <laughs> um, you see that she says all the magic stuff. Yes, since you were inducted into the unsleeping city by the questing blade and the magical world that exists behind the waking world of New York was revealed to you. This is your first SantaCon with us. Yeah. Um, so what do you know about SantaCon already? Um, I guess it's just like a bunch of drunk people trying to have some fun in, this, in the streets. It's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to do other stuff while that's happening. It's, you know, for firefighters, uh, where a lot of us are working that, um, so, you know, it's not, maybe not my favorite thing, mm -hmm. but I get that people enjoy that. For sure. As long as they're being safe, that's the way to go, I guess. <laughs> so what SantaCon actually is, is a little bit more complex than that. Awesome. People perceive SantaCon to be a large, obnoxious pub crawl. You ever wondered how Santa Claus is able to get to all those homes in one night? Well, I just assumed it's uh, magic, but yeah. Well, magic has to work in certain ways. Magic totally. can't just solve everything. You know, that's why we have all these books. It's actually quite complex. Gotcha. Magic is very hard to do. Um, I thought, yeah, okay. It, it doesn't solve all your problems. Oh, um, okay. So, well, first of all, Santa Claus is real. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, second of all, in order to get to all those homes in one night, Santa can't be in all those places at once. That would take a level of magic that is honestly staggering to even consider. So instead what happens is Santa Claus clones himself millions and millions of times, and each of those clones uh, goes to the separate houses. Uh, does that, are you with me so far? Yeah, I think I get it. What? Uh, he it's clones himself a million times? Millions of times. Uh, clones wow. millions of times, uh, and those, Clones then go about and actually do that work for Santa Claus. Uh, however, the technology that Santa uses is extremely potent, but... Um, Wait, is Santa a scientist? Hmm? He's a scientist? Partially, yes. Wow. But also a, an extremely powerful sorcerer. Oh, okay. Uh, effectively, uh, you know, if you clone yourself millions and millions of times, even with the best arcane equipment available and the best spell casting, not every single clone is gonna turn out great. <laughs> I grew up with twins and one of them was worse than the other, so that makes sense. Oh. <laughs> I hear that, I hear that and I, I believe. Just say like sports, he seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> It's a little bit dissimilar from that, I won't oh, lie. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but effectively what happens is that like a week or two before Christmas every year, Santa Claus comes to New York and because of the Umbra Arcana, mm. do you need a refresher on the Umbra Arcana? Do you I do, it? yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. It's okay, no, it's all right. Um, so I run mm. the Clinton Hill Chantry, yeah. which is a branch of the Gramercy Occult Society. Yeah, with me yeah, so far, right? Yeah, I, I, the Gramercy Occult Society manages the Umbral Engine. Yeah. Right? And that creates the Umbral Arcana, which is the spectral force that keeps New Yorkers from being aware that magical things are happening around them at all times. Keeps them safe from the idea of magical stuff. Yes, precisely. That's exactly right. I so, can figure it out that way, yeah. Cool. That keeps them safe. It's a safety thing. Yeah. So because of that, uh, Santa deposits his defective clones here in the city once a year. That is SantaCon. And what happens to them after they get here? They mostly wander around. They're pretty harmless. Uh, most of them have a hard time moving or getting around because, again, they're defective clones. But basically, we just need to round them up and uh, kind of either, you know, Depending on how some people feel, you can either hold on to them and they naturally die in a couple of weeks, or you can just incinerate them. Uh, wow. But what I, you know, basically that's what happens. Is Santa good? <laughs> he cares deeply for the children of the world and voluntarily clones himself millions of times. Mm. Uh, 
The ethics of it are alarming, I won't lie. <laughs> it's above my pay grade a little bit to think about It's a little bit that. above your pay grade. So if you just want to sort of hit the bricks and kind of keep a patrol this evening for any of that weird stuff happening, uh, and just sort of round up any clones that you find and deposit them to us. If they're causing danger, uh, I would say maybe dispatch them right then and there. Wow, okay, yeah. It's the right thing to do, I guess. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, great, and uh, that selfie was uh, was good. That was a nice oh, selfie. Oh, cool, thanks. I wasn't sure what you thought of it, uh, but uh, yeah, I can keep sending them to you, I guess. It's not really an invitation, but, but right. you know, do what you need to do. Awesome. Uh, cool. What does Ricky do after that? <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky takes off to SantaCon. Cool. Um, you're wandering around. It's getting a little bit later in the day. You're kind of like rooftop to rooftop moving around. Um, go ahead and make a perception check for me and an investigate check. Uh, perception's only a seven. Uh, eight, uh, 10 for investigating. 10 for investigating, cool. Um, uh, so you're investigating around. Uh, you follow a weird kind of minty smell on the air, and you arrive uh, at this alleyway. You smell the mint growing stronger. As you look over the edge, you see an unconscious Pete the Plug. Uh, and you see that there are three horrifying mutant Santa Clauses moving towards Pete's body on the ground. From the, uh, from the... Uh, You're up above them, they're in the alleyway going... I just, uh, I just stop and tell, Hey! <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> Merry Christmas! Okay, guys, uh, hold on. <laughs> Start climbing down. <laughs> uh, you safely descend. Um, Pete, you come to, you got bitten on the head, and you can only smell mint, and you can feel your bones becoming sweet in your body. Uh, Ricky, you fully descend uh, into the alleyway. Um, uh, what do you say to the, the we, these weird sort of mutants look like they shamble around and like surrounding you? Uh, what do you do as uh, they, they kind of look a little bit menacing to you? I just, uh, I step between them and Pete. So you guys gotta go stand over there right now. Um, uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, go Santa's, ahead and make an stand over there. Make an intimidate check for me real quick. Uh, I got a 20. A 20? Oh. Um, you see that the, uh, the one that you were speaking directly to explodes into peppermint, <laughs> and the other two go, ah! and they just start running away. Oh no. Uh, I, uh, are they running into the street? Uh, it looks like they're running into the street. I, 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 I look at Pete and I feel like I have to check on him first. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead and make, I guess, a medicine check for me. Ooh, where's this? Uh, 22. Um, 22, uh, Rad, you, uh, there is a occult sickness spreading through Pete's body. Do I know if it's a disease? You know that it's a magical disease, something that only a magical healer would be able to handle. Okay. Um, I couldn't use lay on hands for five points. It's not to hit take point damage okay. or something else. Um, okay. Man, help. <laughs> hey, sir, listen <sighs> to me. Uh, I'm a New York City firefighter. <laughs> You bit me! Yeah, it looks like you got a pretty nice. I pull my bite. gun. Like, okay. I'm gonna go sir? after the two Santas. Hey, hey, sir, <laughs> sir. Um, I'm gonna ask you to put that gun down. <laughs> sir, huh. I'm gonna need you to put the gun down. I got all the licenses for it. I put it back in that my That sounds leg. great, but you're in sort of a state right now. I'm gonna get you some help. Um, okay, so <sighs> I know I know a guy who can help us. Uh, he works at the hospital. How much is, oh, I can't go to the hospital, man. He's, he, I'm sure you really need to go to the hospital. No, no, no. But, I can um... smell how sweet your body's turning, <laughs> and it's time to take care of that. So, <laughs> You and do, yum. Um, you, a full peppermint tooth pops one of your original teeth out, <laughs> and a candy cane striped tooth is just in your mouth. Oh, my tooth! I just lost the tooth! Honestly, that's awful. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Pete is having a hard time walking, and Ricky, you get an arm underneath Pete. You guys take off as you kick up <laughs> a little bit of snow, <laughs> wisps up into the air. <laughs> 
over the river to Manhattan and uptown, up over the park, over the Upper West Side, past Columbia University, all the way to Harlem. A beautiful, beautiful morning. It's getting a little bit late in the morning now, and after having worked the graveyard shift the previous night in a lovely apartment, the sounds of the neighborhood coming to life all around him, Kingston Brown wakes up for another shift. Uh, Luke, could you describe Kingston Brown for us? Of course. Uh, hello, my name is Kingston Brown. Uh, I work at St. Owens. I'm about uh, 6'2". Uh, I wear uh, my grandfather's black trench coat, generally over either my uh, nursing scrubs or like a white t-shirt. Uh, you know, I'm New York born and bred. I've been here since 1963 when I was born. Uh, I've almost never left. Uh, I love it here, the city. These are my people. This is my space. I take care of it. I am a steward of New York City. I will be here until I die. <laughs> uh, Kingston, uh, you wake up in your apartment. Uh, uh, this place is your sanctum. Uh, what, what kind of stuff is around you in your apartment right now? I mean, we got, uh, you know, framed uh, jerseys, uh, of course, for my favorite hockey team, the New York Islanders. <laughs> um, uh, of course, uh, I got framed jerseys. Uh, I've got like a very nice like sound system, mostly vinyl, but not like hipster vinyl, like actual vinyl. <laughs> um, I've got like it's and it's like comfort over style. It's not there's like a lot of like trinkets and heirlooms and things that like my grandfather or, or that my parents had that they've given to me or things that I've collected from friends or people who I've worked with uh, that kind of adorn the walls. Beautiful. Uh, you put on your coat, you look out and see a little bit of snow kick over the neighborhood, and you feel the rate of your heart begin to match the rhythm of the city around you. Uh, you head downstairs. Uh, you're up on the third floor, you get into the second floor. Uh, your mom in like a little nightcap with a little nightgown, big thick spectacles, clear frame spectacles, pops out of the door um, with a plate of eggs and sausage. Mom, I can't, I, I gotta go to work. I can't eat right now. I can't eat breakfast. Mom, I'm a 55 year old man. I can feed myself. <laughs> so you don't want my breakfast. I mean, of course I'm gonna eat your breakfast. I'm just saying that you don't need to go through all the trouble to make it for me. It's not a trouble when you love somebody. All right, I go inside, I take the plate inside. <laughs> it's plate inside. Uh, your mom is glowing with just love and pride, having successfully trapped you on the staircase. Yep. Um, uh, there is so much more food waiting inside. Okay, Ma, I thought it was just this plate. What? No. I thought it was just this plate. Okay, well, there's a little more. What do you want me to say? <laughs> well, I can't eat all of this. I'm gonna eat what's on this plate and then I'm gonna go. Okay, you can take some with you. I can't take some with you me. You can take some with me. I ain't gonna take some with me. <laughs> you see that she kisses you on the cheek and you can feel her old little hand with his little ring on it uh, slip a little Tupperware into the pocket of your coat. Ma, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm know. not supporting well, you. Well, you know it's your business. You okay. have a Tupperware in your coat. We're That's not gonna fight. You. We're not gonna fight right now because I have to go to work. Okay. I'm gonna take this food with me, but we're gonna have words later. Uh, I hope we do and kisses you on the cheek. Um, <laughs> and you head downstairs, um, you see that your uh, uh, niece and nephews come barreling out of the first uh, floor apartment, uh, all late for school. You see like putting shoes and stuff on. Morning, Uncle Kingston. Good morning. Oh man, late for school, so- Why are y'all late for school? Well, it was you, uh, your cousin Claude leans his head out and says, late for school because of video games. What are you gonna do? How you doing, Kingston? I'm doing well, Claude, how are you? Uh, you know, another morning. Uh, you see, he says, didn't you work graveyard last night? Of course. You're gonna make yourself sick. Why are you doing that? I ain't gonna make myself sick. I'm 55 years old, all right? I can take care of myself, Claude. <laughs> Once you work, I'm getting your children to school on time. <laughs> Claude is, you can feel like the spiritual energy of your cousin being put in his place. And he's uh, like. And then I put a hand on his shoulder. I'm like, but being a father is tough and I understand that. <laughs> Um, uh, you see that uh, uh, little uh, uh, Cooper looks up at you, who's your nine-year-old nephew. You see, he goes, oh, okay, so why didn't you ever have kids? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see y'all children later. <laughs> <laughs> you head out the door. Uh, you start walking down the street. Um, you, uh, uh, you see, that from all around the neighborhood, you hear, like, 
Hey, Kingston Brown, how's it going, man? Hey, how you doing, Johnny? I'm doing all right, you know, keeping out of trouble. Hey, thanks for that thing with my sister, man. You're a real swell guy. Hey, man, fam, we take care of each other, all right? You're on the block, you come ask Kingston, you need something, I give it to you. <laughs> you see that he claps you on the shoulder. Um, you uh, go to the corner store, you see Cosmo's there at the register, you see he says, hey, there he is. Hey, what's going on, Cos? Uh, you see he puts the coffee in front of you. Oh. It's the way I like it? As always. Black as hell. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> uh, uh, you see, he smiles and says, all right, man, you take it easy. Hey, thanks for the thing with my brother, by the way. That was a real thing. Hey, good... man, we're family, all right? On this block, if I can help you, you come find me, I will. <laughs> uh, you take up, uh, you uh, walk right out into traffic. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, you end, uh, you are, I think you, at this point, probably, what the, the cars would never, dream of hitting you here, not in your neighborhood. Never. Uh, see the cars, um, yeah, you, it's perfectly, you do not need to break your stride for the cars to effortlessly zoom past you in all directions. You get to the other side, um, uh, you uh, walk over to the bus stop, uh, the bus pulls in, Suzette pulls up in the bus, um, you see she says, Good morning, Mr. Kingston. Good morning, Suzette. Oh, it's wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see you as well. It hadn't been so, uh, hadn't been so long since I was on the bus ride home. I know. Well, I'm glad to see you're up and at him again. Of course. Uh, you, uh, as you take your first step onto the bus, you see that with no touch of anything, the little light flick screen, uh, uh, your fare is taken care of by mm. the city itself. Oh. Uh, you walk onto the bus uh, and you start to head off towards St. Owens. Um, arriving at St. Owens, what's the, what are the, the first things that Kingston gets up to in his day? Uh, first, walk straight up to the receptionist, uh, take out the Tupperware that my mother gave her, and give it to her. Oh my God, I forgot to bring lunch! Oh, I thought so. Oh my um, God, how do you know this stuff? Hey, what can I say? You know, I know my people, I know my city. Um, <laughs> See, she says, this smells delicious. Well, I can't say I made it, but I tell you, I can promise it's good. <laughs> you see, she smiles and says, I'll give you best to my mother. Of course. Um, you begin your day, um, uh, you say hi to Emiko, uh, uh, Matsui. Uh, she looks over and says, uh, Kingston, there's a, a sort of busy day ahead of us here. Okay. Um, uh, that guy Lowell Masters came in again. Mm. Um, he's back with a kind of similar problem from last time. Okay, well, well somebody needs to talk to him. Um, uh, so he hands you a chart um, and brings you over to a room. Uh, you see that this guy's in here. Um, you see, he's kind of an older, you know, balding kind of guy. Um, sort of looks like one of these New York guys, just neighborhood guys, got a thick mustache. Looks up and you see, he goes, okay, uh, look, I I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty standard. I, uh, so I go around, you know, because in the subways and stuff, there's a lot of cool stuff down there. And I found this, um, looked like some kind of bronze statue of a falcon or something like that. I thought I'd pawn it for a little bit of money. But what I needed to do was I needed to varnish it, right, to get some of the rust mm -hmm. off. So I put some varnish on it. And then what happened was I, you know, I, my, uh, uh, I was getting ready for a shower, so I was naked. Of course, you mm -hmm. understand, right? Uh, and before I take a shower, I like to have a little bowl of cereal, just something I like to do. Lowell, I'm gonna stop you right now. <laughs> what happened is the cereal's up on a tall Lowell, shelf, so there's a step ladder to Lowell, get up there. Lowell, you gotta stop coming in here, Lowell. You gotta fix your life, all right, Lowell? Because I know for a fact, Lowell, get cut to the end of the story. I fell off the ladder and the statue went up my butt. Yep. <laughs> Lowell, have you ever tried a therapist instead of a medical doctor? No, I, 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 what happened was it was an accident and it got oh, up there. Okay, Lowell, Lowell, this is the fourth time you've come up here with something in your butt. Let's be real right now, Lowell. Let's be real right now. Lowell, how many times have you come up here with stuff in your butt? Four times. Four times. We're gonna take the thing out your butt. I'm not saying I'm gonna deny you medical services. I'm just saying that you need to ask yourself some questions. Cause I'll tell you, I'm getting real close. Ain't nothing wrong with being kinky. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not kinky, but ain't nothing wrong with being kinky. All right, so you wanna be kinky, that's fine. Just be kinky safely, all right? You mean that? That really? A hundred percent. Ain't nothing wrong with being a freak. 
You're a good man. You're a good man, Nurse Brown. I appreciate that. You're a good man. Of course. Pre- no, no, what were you gonna say? I just, no one's ever told me that before, and I find a lot of this cool, you know, treasures and artifacts and stuff like that, and I put them on my butt, and I just never, I just like the feeling of it going up there, knowing that someone put a lot of time and effort into, you know, this sort of thing. And hey, hey, I get it, all right? You got some, you got, you like, you like an artifacts, or I have an artifacts for you, or something like that. <laughs> I'm not trying to get into it, that's your business. But you just need to figure out how you can do it safely, because I tell you, it's expensive to come to the hospital. <laughs> It's expensive. Stop paying all this money. Uh, you know, money's no money's no object, but uh, f- for me, because I do sell these artifacts afterwards. Oh, for good money. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What? You selling? No, all- no, no, no. <laughs> I clean them. I clean them. Okay. <laughs> you know what, Mr. Master? I better head out. I'm gonna, <laughs> you head, better head I'm out. gonna get ready for the for the, the operation. Of course. Um, it's great. You, he, he, it actually does look like a tremendous spiritual weight has been lifted from him uh, of, of a weird self-loathing is now gone. And he seems sort of at peace. Um, you, uh, it's a couple hours later. Uh, you're talking with a, a buddy of yours. This, uh, this is actually one of the many trolls uh, that populate the rivers around New York City. Um, uh, it's a bridge and tunnel troll, so he's the a buddy of yours who works under the George Washington Bridge. Um, you see, he's going, thanks again, man, this is great. So basically, I just, I, I take this and the warts will start coming back. Exactly. Okay. And if you want to spend some more time around water, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, it's just hard. You know, I haven't actually been in the river now because the whole thing is it's all electronic these I mean, days. Exactly. I mean, You know, back in the old days, trolls would have to jump out and actually collect a mm-hmm. toll or do a riddle or mm-hmm. something. And now you just solve the easy pass and whatever else. Exactly. So, hey, that just means we got to put in that extra effort. Right, but there's time in the day. There's always time in the day. You just gotta find it. Uh, you're not wrong, man. Boom, doors uh, swing open, and Ricky Matsui comes in with Pete the Plug under his arm. Ricky! Put me down! <laughs> you're gonna be okay, sir. Ricky, what's going on? Have I, y'all, two, y'all two been jumping on buildings again? Ricky, I, I told you to stop jumping on buildings. You're right, I should be, I can do it very carefully, and I don't, Suggest many other people. I got a very sweet smelling man here. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweet smelling? I don't know what you meant by that, but yeah, uh, my tooth fell off and now it's a candy. Hey, how much is this gonna cost? All right. Just walking through this door, I feel like I owe you 500 bucks. All right, well, money is not a, can I pull them into a, a, a quiet room or a room that Jason, I know? You walk over to a supply closet mm-hmm. and through the supply closet, a door that opens only to you and the subway token around your neck glows bright, <laughs> opens and a room that you use for when people from the unsleeping city come here uh, opens to you. Pete, you see this weird, magic door open up into this side chamber. Ricky, you've been in here before. Um, you see your sister looks over at you as you're walking into it and says, Ricky, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm, uh, I got a, a my, my friend is Kingston and we're, uh, we're gonna go talk about um Yeah, right, me and cars. Ricky are, are friends. We like to bowl. How did that door <laughs> open? Oh, You hey. see that? Uh, Amico looks over and says, what door? And you look and see that the open door is covered in the same weird flick- flickering shadow, shadow fire that I described from the guys before. And you see that Emiko cannot see the open door. Hospitals have so much money now. Uh, it's crazy. You take, you take, uh, I take Pete, him, we you take, great, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I take Pete in the. Uh, the door is closed. Uh, uh, Pete, you were in there with Kingston. Uh, can I cast Detect Poison and Disease? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, uh, you hold out your hand. Uh, you know that today is SantaCon. Normally, it's a little bit of a hassle to clean up all those clones. This is something you haven't seen before. This is a very virulent, dangerous thing. There is like some kind of arcane virus that is turning this kid's bones into peppermint. What happened to you? How much can I tell you? Like, can you turn me into the cops? What? No. What are you talking about? We're in a magic room right now. I I, I, I don't... I don't know, look man, okay fine, I took some mushrooms. You okay, took, took some mushrooms? I took more than normal and then my dad floated away on a bubble and a man hit my face. A man hit your face? Who he hit bit your face? face? A man bit your face? Who bit your face? It was after I pushed a happy face button and I let it all out. You let, 
I'm sorry. Okay. Darn All right. Yes. Now I need to understand. This disease looks like you were bitten by a Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. Uh, is there something I can do? What can give I do with what a, I know? Because you have the spell up, so give me a medicine check with advantage, because you're lo actively looking at it right now. Great. Uh, okay, so that's 22, and uh, something that's not way less than 22. Um, cool. Um, you th uh, uh, go ahead also and give me an arcana check. Great. Uh, 10. Okay. You ascertain what's going on. This kid has a magical disease that you think you can treat here in the room with what you've got. Okay. Uh, there is something much deeper and more profound magically happening that you don't think is an external virus. You think that there's something medical or otherwise going on with this kid, period. Great. All right, what's your name, son? Uh, Jeffrey. All right, Jeffrey. <laughs> I'm gonna work on what is the problem right now, the mm. thing that's got your teeth popping out. Yeah. But we should talk after that. Because there's yeah, something yeah, yeah. going on. Okay, yeah. Uh, I only, you know, I actually have a doctor. So if you could just tell oh, me really? what Who's you were gonna do. I can pull your records. What's your doctor's name? Uh, he's a different kind of doctor. You probably don't know. A he's... different, what's a different kind of doctor? He, he's just like, you know, he's, uh, he's like, he's probably not, he, you don't know, different circles. Give, me, give, give it a shot. He doesn't work in a place like this, okay? He works. Give, me a, give it a shot. What's his name? Hmm? What's his name? Doctor. <laughs> Doctor Brinman. Brinman? <laughs> Doctor, I look at my bracelet. What does it say? <laughs> Doctor. Uh, Doctor Lugash Premitsky. It's Doctor Premitsky. Oh! Why'd you say so? Really? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Works in the warehouse down yes, in Brooklyn. Of yes, course. Yes, exactly. Fantastic <laughs> the doctor. The popcorn machine. I, uh, yes. Honestly, surprisingly good for working under the table like he does. Mm -hmm. That man could work in a hospital like this, walk away with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. But he's a good man. <laughs> so much That's money, man. Good man. I mean, what can I say? I'm I'm speaking in hyperbole, as they say. No, I'm done. He, he could make a lot of money. He's a good doctor. Anyway, uh, can I set to like uh, fixing the. You put a syringe together. There's a lot of stuff in this room that is traditional medicine mixed with stuff that is uh, just some like arcane tinctures, different things. There's like, you know, basilisk venom in here and like unicorn blood and all that crazy shit. Um, you put a syringe together, um, uh, you know, alcohol swab the area, you administer it, and Pete, you feel the pain stop almost immediately. Um, and not only that, but you feel a sense of like Christmas cheer enter your body for a second, and you've still got that one peppermint tooth there. But other than that, it appears like you're healed or better. Oh, okay. Um, and you also feel a sense of, there's a moment where after you get the shot, you two feel something. Each of you guys roll a, uh, just a wisdom check. For, actually, you roll a charisma check, you roll a wisdom check. Uh, 19. Uh, tw over 20. Oh, awesome. As you are healed, you look up and you are looking at Pete and see this weird, hallucinatory thing of like bright lights, big city, marquee, and like twirling gouts of like colorful magic. You look at Kingston and see a like golden light setting in between the rows of buildings and this feeling of a golden light in the heart of like a happy city full of people and neighbors all beating together in one heart. And your guys' magic touches and steams, and like, but then unites in some kind of helix and disappears. The hell Whoa, go are away you? From me. What, what did you do to me? I don't know. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never seen nothing like that. I, I don't. What what's happening? I don't know. Where did you come from? I don't know. I'm on a lot of meds right now, so maybe that was like a weird combination. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. Roll actually just a uh, history check for me. Uh oh, look at that. Uh, uh over twenty. Twenty three. Um, you you know who can help you figure out whatever the f this is. Oh, fantastic. You know, 
What are you doing today? You got some time? Uh, I was well, gonna, yeah. I, I got a got friend some. who could uh, help us understand what's going on uh, right now. Okay, is it that weird buff dude? No, it's not that weird buff dude. <laughs> but he's probably gonna come along. He's, I don't know, what do you think of him? I feel like he would bully me. <laughs> nah, he's a nice dude. He's a nice dude. Little dumb. Very he's like nice. a golden retriever. Mm, I like that. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. You guys step outside, Ricky. Your sister's going, <laughs> going. That NY one interview. Look, I, a lot of my friends are single. It would be easy. Yeah, I just, um, you know, uh, I appreciate that. I'm just kind of looking for someone that has like a, a certain. Your friends are nice, uh, but I'm just kind of focusing on my career right now. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, you guys walk out, you see uh, Kingston and Pete. Pete looks healthy again. Um, and you guys uh, take off into the snow. <laughs> bada boom, bada bam. The snow whew, whirls out as Kingston, Ricky, and Pete all head out from there. Up into the sky, Ooh, settling down Central Park. In the middle of one of the streets that crosses the park down through the manhole cover to water that melts into the dank, grimy, filthy subway tunnels of New York City. A couple of MTA workers with their lanterns up pick away at the side of the wall doing some repairs from water damage. And one of them says, I'm telling you guys, I seen it. It was a si it was this friggin' big. It was the size of a friggin' dog. I swear to God. Shut the f up, Wally. You do not see a rat the size of a dog. And I swear to God, I did. It was huge. The thing was enormous. It was like, uh, I, I don't know. When it came out, and I, I said, I see good one. Ah, and it looked and it looked right at me. And I swear to God, it smiled. Um, you see that? <laughs> Uh, this is crazy. We were talking about rats and <laughs> rat kings. Rat kings are real. You guys, you better wake up, because rat kings are real. They live in the sewers. They were all tied together, but it tells hey. it's real. Uh, so the guys walk away and say, Wally, you're an idiot. Walk away, and Wally goes, you know, you say that now, but um, from the steel rafters overhead, hidden in darkness, uh, is our friend Cugrash. Uh, uh, Murph, could you please describe Cugrash for us? Yes, uh, hey, I'm uh, Cugrash. I uh, I look like kind of a up master splinter. I've got <laughs> like a hooked uh, humpback, I'm about two feet tall. I'm a rat man. Um, I've got like a, a rusty metal staff that kind of looks like a pipe. Uh, and then I wear rags made out of uh, like discarded MTA uh, employee clothes. Uh, and you know, I, I live in the subway tunnels and I take care of the, uh, the discarded uh, people uh, of New York and the, the little beasts and the cockroaches. I am the, that feeds the flies. <laughs> <laughs> A dumpster drill. Uh, Cugress, you look down at Wally who goes, okay, you guys believe what you want, but I know what I saw. Um, hey, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Jesus? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just make some chittering sound. <laughs> oh, you turn into a rat. It's a miracle. <laughs> Wherever you are, rat Jesus, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a, such a sweet man. <laughs> um, uh, Kagresh, it's, a, it's the day of, of SantaCon. Um, uh, you're scampering around. Uh, what, what are you getting up to on a day like today? Uh, I think uh, we are absolutely this year. We are every year. We are not prepared. Uh, I'm trying to find um, like homeless people and get them indoors and, and things like that. Um, you scurry around. Uh, you find a couple guys. Um, uh, some of the, the, the homeless who have been around long enough actually can see you now and know who you are. And a couple of them, you know, you show up. Uh, with, you know, like, food for them. And they go, oh, Congress, thanks, pal. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this stuff, uh, people just, this is a lot of this stuff is uh, bread from restaurants. People take it, uh, you know, in their takeout bags. They think they're going to eat it, and they don't eat the bread. But it's still good bread. 
I eat the real shitty stuff. You can have the good stuff, man. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. He's real nice to you. Um, it has some bread. Uh, your skipper, go ahead and give me an investigate check. Sure. Uh, not great. Uh, 11. Um, you've been looking around. Normally, uh, in this insane day where all these and mutant Santas fill the unsleeping city, and regular humans only see it as a pub crawl, but all the magical denizens of New York know that it's this weird thing where a bunch of gross mutants kind of bumble around until they get cleaned up. Uh, you normally find like a bag of like hot cocoa and treats and stuff from Santa Claus that he leaves for you to distribute to like homeless people and things like that. It's getting later in the day and you haven't found it yet, uh, and you haven't heard from him at all, which is weird. Santa, you bum, where the hell are you, dude? <laughs> where the hell is this, dude? Uh, as you're scurrying around, though, you see an unconscious Sophia uh, passed out in some garbage, a little bit covered in snow. You gotta be kidding. People just, we just walking past this. We just see somebody passed out. She's using a trash bag as a sleeping bag. We're just gonna, <laughs> all right, everybody's walking. All right, I'll do it. Uh, I see that her, uh, uh, that she's missing her shoes. <laughs> and uh, I guess I have, I probably have like a, a little pack of, of like little plastic bags and things with me. Uh, so I make her some makeshift <laughs> plastic bag <laughs> shoes with like rubber bands. <laughs> uh, incredible. Um, uh, Sophia, you wake up uh, with new plastic shoes and oh maybe a little bit of food next to you. Uh, and you see you're incredibly hungover, and you see for the first time through sober eyes, uh, Cog Rash in front of you. Oh, hey, it's you again. Oh my God, are you real? <laughs> and we, we hung, we talked about your ex-husband for like a wild tale. I know. For I, like three hours, you and I hung out. I know. I have that memory. I just thought that maybe it was like too many wine coolers. You were insanely drunk. <laughs> You can hold it. You were having a conversation. I'm sorry. Are you a rat? <laughs> As sort of. I'm a rat. Is this man. a Santa Con outfit? Oh, Is you're in. No. You're in a Santa Con outfit. I don't understand it thematically. <laughs> but... <laughs> Do not compare me to those. F <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. I gave you... Someone from outside of New York comes in and everyone hates them. Is that the... what it is? Because they're from you... New Jersey. What happened to your face? You got. You got punched. Yeah, but I. I mean, you should see the other guys, what Dale used to say. Were they Santa Con? Oh my, it's Dale again. <laughs> yeah. Were oh. they Santa Con guys? What no, it was, oh. I mean, my memory's a little hazy, but it was these guys and they were kind of uh, messing with these girls and then I, you know, I, I got in the way and I made sure the girls were taken care of. That's and good, you know, there's not enough people like that yeah. anymore. Yeah, and they were, they were, they were tall. They were really tall. I'll leave it at that. Uh, Kagrash, you see, two little cockroaches out in this cold weather, which is crazy, um, skittering across a railing very, very fast. And you see that they have two little like hobo sacks over their shoulder and are skittering along a railing. Hey, Fred, Marty. Hey, what's going on, Marty? Where are you guys going? We getting the f out of here. Oh yeah, Santa Con. Did you see what happened to this lady? No, not Santa Con. She just went down in the park. She just went down at the park. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, me, what what happened at the park? I don't know. There was like a, it was, what do you, what'd you call it? It was like a horse carriage, but with no wheels. It was just like the carriage part, no wheels on it. And there was a bunch of horses that had these big fucking tumors coming out of their head. Reindeer, yeah, they're Santa. You certainly, you. you what? Santa. No, these horses had up tumors coming yeah, out of their fucking a, head. God, it's called a reindeer. What? It's don't worry about it. I don't need to teach there you about up horses with big Santas in the park. Well, I don't know, cause he's, he's, it was like he blazed through like a green light, like that, and the fucking horses took off. I hope to go see a doctor, cause it's sick. Is Santa dead? Did somebody shoot Santa? I don't know, no, I'm not, I'm not religious. This work, this. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks, friend, thanks, Marty. Uh, thank you, bud. <laughs> uh, Santa sorry. Claus is real and he's dead. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Rewind. You just 
you just made cockroach noises at, you just hissed at some cockroaches who hissed back at you for what looked like a conversation. I mean, they gestured and everything. <laughs> yeah, well, we just making co- we were just making bug noises Santa? for a full, like, minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I understand uh, animals and they understand me. Some of the I picked up over the years. From being an animal. I am a rat, man. <laughs> we should go to the park. Santa might be dead. Ah, why not? <laughs> Let me uh, let me get a walk me down and we can go. Uh, you know what? Why not? I'll have some too. I can't go in there. I'm a rat. Right, Sean. Uh, you see Sean? that? The Sean literally sh- takes the iron up. Jesus Christ! You're wearing the same clothes as last night. Is it a different day? It's a full different day. Yeah. Um, give me a couple of mics, hard. <laughs> yeah, you want that in a you want that in a coffee cup? Uh, can I get one of those buckets that you put the Coronas in? Full of Mike's heart? <laughs> yeah, like a painter's I'll bucket. see if we got a box. Uh, he goes in downstairs. Minutes later, you are walking down the street with a full <laughs> b- bucket of hard lemonade. Uh, I crack I'm one. i it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crash, by the way. I don't know if you remember. Right? Sophia, I'm Sophia right? Lee. Yeah. Yeah. We've, yeah. We've like met. <laughs> yeah, I, I am sorry that I don't remember you. Uh, it's okay. But I will remember you now because I'm very sober right now. In fact, somewhat sick. Yeah, let's get a little f***ed up and go see if Santa's dead, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds right. good. Uh, you guys head up to the park. Each of you guys make an investigate check for me. Uh, feel free if you want to cast any magic as well to do that. <laughs> I got a uh, uh, four. Nine. Four and nine. Uh, you guys wander around the park for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we find a hot dog stand? <laughs> uh, you guys for sure find a hot dog stand. Um, see the guy says, hey boys, I get you a hot dog? Hot dog? Uh, yeah, I yeah. lower my face so no one sees I'm a rat. <laughs> uh, I got him, I got him. Two hot dogs. There. Put two hot dogs there. See, so he goes, it's, good. it's crazy because there's a, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, there's a sort of fight out in the promenade past here a little while ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he, he, Who points, through some, into it? he points through some hedges sort of heading off towards Belvedere Castle where the woods get a little thicker in the park. Mm. Hey, you want to go hiking? Yeah, let's go into the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You guys head into the bushes. Uh, give me a nature check. Okay. I'm a little better at that. 22. You go through the skittering thing. You see some squirrels. Why well, there, Cugrat? <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, what's nothing. up, Lenny? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> Christmas time. You know it's easy yeah, to go. Yeah, Christmas. <laughs> we love Christmas. Yeah, it's wonderful, man. <laughs> I stole someone's keys. You stole? Why the f***ing Lenny? Who knows? You sociopath. Give me the keys. You do. Dude, f*** you. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> Francis Lenny, you <laughs> He's a cat. Uh, squirrels just steal s***, put it in their trees. I'm think sorry. Old city Once them. again, rewind. There was a bunch of just Oh, he told me to f- He said f- you. He ran off. <laughs> yeah, I saw he had a set of keys yeah, on him. Just you guys arrive in a clearing. You see that there is an enormous, polished red sleigh. Um, it, the the like area where reindeer would be attached to the sleigh has been severed, and there is a giant uh, glove box torn out of the front of the sleigh and there are things scattered throughout. It looks like people have been like rummaging through the sleigh here. Um, you see that there is, um, peppermint smelling blood, like white and red blood spattered everywhere around here. Uh, you see that there are also, uh, a number of small little uh, green ivy leaves. Uh, with that 22 nature check, these leaves are not from the waking world. These are from Nod, the sixth borough. These are, uh, uh, and in fact, with 22, you smell them. This is fairy magic that happened here. Maybe not the peppermint blood, but there's fairy magic happening here. Oh, it is the pixies. What? I thought this was just a place kids take pictures with Santa. Do you see what they mugged Santa? They stole all of his shit. Okay, again, Santa's real and you're a rat. Santa's, the pixies did this. Okay. The sons of, they're um, serious, this is bad. Uh, Santa's f- <laughs> We are right. f- I'm just going with this ride. All right, yeah. Um, you notice that there is a little glyph 
carved into the wood at the front of the sleigh. It looks like it was broken somehow. It's some fairy shit that you don't know about, but you do know who does. Mm. I think I know somebody who uh, might be able to read this uh, bullshit. Where this is. <laughs> yeah, this is. This isn't Greek or or anything like that. Oh, you speak Greek. Uh, no, but <laughs> I mean, I I'm Catholic, so I've encountered like uh, Greek yeah. <laughs> in uh, a religious sense. Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so you take off. From yeah, there. I'll take off her. Um. Uh. Uh, you guys both head out from there. No need to roll. Uh, the snow kicks up in the park and wisps all the way downtown, past Columbus Circle, going all the way to Broadway, where we see a line of fans clamoring and cheering, holding their playbills uh, from different shows because they're in line for a show that actually hasn't opened yet. They were lucky enough to see some previews for Midsummer Nights a musical version of Shakespeare's classic, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Why not take the Bard's original plays and make them a musical? Uh, the Times Square billboards show all of the signs for the show coming up. The fans are all in the cold and the snow waiting. The stage door opens with a dramatic swing. And Siobhan, could you please describe your character for us? Darling, sweeties, uh, I'm Misty Moore. I'm a Broadway diva. <laughs> Uh, lover of music, lover of energy, lover of dance and light yeah. and stars and music and brilliance. Uh, I'm, well, a lady would never say her age, so I won't. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, four foot something, uh, maybe five one in a beautiful high heel, always wear a tap shoe, even outside. <laughs> and uh, I'm just loving life, loving love. Uh, you, uh, you step out, um, uh, the crowd erupts into cheers. Your assistant, Alyssa, and your pianist, uh, Benjamin, are behind you. Um, they walk out, uh, ah, there's me, Misty, Misty, ah! Um, you see that there's a girl with pigtails and braces, clearly there's some, like, 16-year-old Midwestern girl. She goes, oh my god, Misty Moore, I, this is a poster of the original cash recording of company. Oh. My goodness, I haven't seen one of these in years. I mean, obviously, I have the one in my apartment, which is signed by all of the cast, but this, a, a blank one, oh, I haven't seen one in years. Oh, my God, it's incredible. We just saw this show. We were looking to go see it. You were amazing. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so blessed and honored to do this work. You know, for, for people like you, I don't do it for me. I do it for people like you. Uh, as you say that, you see that her and the other young girls and boys around her all just are, like, salivating. You see that they all say, like, my favorite song yours. I just recorded. I actually did one of your songs, and I did it in the way that you did it in this in the, in the high school play that I did. I'm so <laughs> a burgeoning, sweet, silvery, golden, pink, and purple light begins to come off of them. And though they cannot see it, you certainly can. And up into your nostrils, uh, and you feel like a million bucks. <laughs> You know, as actors, all of us, us actors, we, we're just like, we're, you put us in the word we with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, they just go nuts. Uh, you see Alyssa uh, bends over as you're, you know, signing stuff. And you see she says, um, obviously, of course, you take as much time as you need, uh, Ms. Moore, but um, uh, we do have an appointment. We There's an interview happening uh, back at your penthouse. How do you spell Rebecca, darling? I don't want to spell it wrong. Oh, I can't even spell it. R-E-B-E-C-C-A. Um, but some people call me Becca, or some people call me Rebecca. I wish to do things better. I don't know for a stage name. I haven't signed up for that yet. I really want to... I really want to move to New York. Do you think that's a bad idea? Everybody should move to New York. <laughs> but you know, some people should leave. But you don't know until you get here, darling. <laughs> I can't wait to come here. <laughs> and again, you just see these little silvery sparks come off of them. Um, and you feel amazing. <sighs> um, you leave from this place. You head back to your wonderful uh, penthouse. Uh, I pull myself a Volker on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, see, you see Benjamin looks over at you and says, says, really, you asked how to spell Rebecca? How many times have you spelled Rebecca in your life? I don't know, some people are weird and there's an H in there. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, I guess you're right. Uh, you walk into your penthouse, huge entire walls are just glass windows. Central Park South, looking out uh, over, the, over the park. Alyssa comes over uh, and brings a reporter in from some entertainment magazine. Uh, I, uh, Ms. Moore, I'll be doing the uh, interview with you today. Um, so, a uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, uh, talk to me about working with Perry Lefebvre again. Uh, Perry, my darling Perry, it's such an honor. It's been such a time since we worked together, and oh, he's such a beautiful director, you know, just a beautiful man. And we 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 sit and we we really dig into this work. We dig into it together, and we're really creating this character because obviously we all know the Shakespeare Midsummer Night's Dream. You know, it's for so many people the first Shakespeare that anybody does. But we're really trying to take a new twist on it, really new bent on this character of Titania. Uh, writing all this down, he says, and you're gonna be playing Titania. Yes, yes I am Titania, queen of the fairies, who uh, obviously in the original play ha has a smaller role, but I really feel like we've we've beefed it up. And you know, I'm 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 not a young woman anymore, but I really feel like I can I can hold myself on that stage. And well, I don't want to spoil it too much for the fans, but I think they're in for a surprise. Um, <laughs> as you say that, you are no longer a young woman. You look down at your hand, and you do, in fact, see uh, some liver spots, some light things here, and you can feel something twinge inside you. Uh, it's been, you know, maybe 40 or 50 years since the last time you did it, and you can feel this body starting to tell you that the time is fast approaching. Yeah. Um, but that's so weird! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you continue talking to this interview. You're having your lovely little vodka. It's wonderful. And the preview went smashingly. Um, you suddenly hear a noise coming from the boiler. There's like a, you have one of those things where you have like your own heating and on everything, so you don't have to do it with anyone else. But a little hall closet door opens up, and an air vent kind of <laughs> pops out. Uh, Kugrash and Sophia. Um, oh my God, you are a trip to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. Kugrash. Yeah. Yeah. This is the real New York. I, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. loving it. This yeah. is where I belong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so anyway, I, I'm so terribly sorry, but I do have a show at eight. So, uh, mm, Alyssa. Oh, sorry. Coming right now. I'm so sorry. I will. That will not. That will not happen again. Yes. No. It won't. <laughs> See that she, uh, <laughs> she comes over and says, uh, that's all, Miss Moore needs her vocal rest. Thank you so much. Bye, 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 bye. Uh, she ushers him out. Uh, you turn around, your beautiful cream white carpets are uh, bedecked with filth as Cug Rash walks in uh, with oh Sophie. Oh my God, Cug, is that Misty Moore? Yeah, it's Misty. <gasps> hey, Misty, I it's good to see you again. I saw you in Kinky Boots. You <gasps> did. Oh my God. Oh, what a beautiful show. You radiated, you made that oh, show. thank you so much. It's just such a beautiful story, you know? It's so important. The boots. Oh, I love those boots. <laughs> They're so, so kinky. kinky. <laughs> so kinky. Uh, hey, Misty, uh, we think Santa might be dead. Uh, <laughs> do you know uh, what this weird pixie shit is? Uh, oh. And uh, I guess, do could I have like take, was it like on the sleigh? It was, but you could have like made, it was on the glove compartment door, okay. you could have broken it off. Okay. It has saliva all over it, I ripped it out with my uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, mm, yeah, why don't you do put you it down on the, no? the coffee table uh, right here. Uh, yes, the pixies, the park pixies, Don Confetti and all of his people. Yes, I, uh, uh, I think uh, we, we I found- that little man. Yeah. Uh, can I read it? What do uh, I read? You can absolutely read it. Uh, let me know if you're doing any magic or stuff to it. Uh, or or uh, you can go ahead and make either an arcana check. I mean, if it's Seely, I speak Seely. Yeah, it is Seely. Great. Um, um, then I can, I can just read it. I, get, I can also do an arcana check, but my arcana levels. Darling, I don't, I don't study magic. I just am magic. <laughs> <laughs> you look at it. You recognize one element of this which is immediately troubling to mm -hmm. you. This is a clear fae rune. All it is, is about, basically, is about breaking a ward on something, breaking magical wards, uh, which would make sense because Santa's sleigh would be f warded beyond imagination. Uh, the thing that gave this the juice to work, though, because normally, like, a, a fairy, especially in pixies, would not be able to crack into Santa's sleigh. There's something being invoked here, and hidden within the rune, 
you recognize something, you don't know what it is or can't read it, it's an infernal rune. You... Well, there's something pretty nasty. Uh, you know what that religion, it's one of those religious ones. Sure. You know, I, 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 it's written in Sealy, but this is some dark, nasty stuff. Just like... Some like devil. Yeah, yeah, infernal, nasty, hell plane. Misty, you look at the rune again. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't read infernal, but you do know who does. I think I know who can help us out with this nasty little situation. Maybe I'll uh, put put you in a blanket and carry you over the rest of it. Sure, Is yeah. Okay I you? jump into her arms. <laughs> Okay, this was okay. <laughs> it's, like a, it's, it's like a baby. It's not Prada. Yeah. It's Mew Mew. It's not Prada. <laughs> I'm just going through your drawers. And I'm like, God, this place is so nice. Um, uh, incredible. Uh, you guys take off. Snow kicks off Central Park West. We follow the snow through the air as it wends its way. Two gusts of snow as Ricky, Kingston, and Pete, and Sophia, Misty, and Cugrash converge on the steps of the public library by Bryant Park. You guys, there's snow everywhere, taxis, busy day, it's getting into like the mid-afternoon, uh, and you guys spot each other in these two groups of three. Kingston! Oh. Kingston, how's it going? Hi, Miss Go Misty, oh. Cugrass, what's going on, guys? I'm so going? sorry, are you Mr. March? <laughs> Oh yes, uh, that's that's me. Oh my god, uh, the girls at the beauty salon are gonna flip. Can I take a selfie with you? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> also, guys, this is Jeffrey. Jeffrey, oh this god. is uh, Jeffrey. Hey, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. I'm Cugrash. Oh my god, are you a rat? I'm a rat man. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry if that was rude. <laughs> you, uh, Pete, the mushrooms are done. You're fully so. You know that you're sober. You know that you're sober. The, the degree to which this is all like a fun little trip is fully leaving you, especially after whatever that shot Kingston gave you was. And suddenly you hear a booming voice to your right go, well, 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 would you wish to enter? One of the huge stone lions turns and is speaking directly at you guys. You hear a voice to your left. I think they do wish to enter. <laughs> Hello, good to see you again. Hey. If you're gonna ask us which one of you lies and which one of you tells the truth, we can skip it, we know. Both of us always lie. Yes, we know, exactly. that's the we're trick. Not, we're not trying to play these games, boys. Oh, let's play some games. <laughs> we guard the library. We are the guardians of the Gramercy Occult <laughs> Society. Hello, oh, a new face. Hello, I am Orlando, and this is my boyfriend, Rovius. Okay, look, you guys, this was really nice, but I don't. I don't really have time for like a puzzle room kind of thing. I do, just... I love this. <laughs> All right. I'm not very good at them, but I can definitely try my hardest, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, you guys see that the two stone lines sort of laugh and uh, are joking with you guys a bit. Uh, they go, well, uh, what business brings you here to the Gramercy Occult Society? We need to talk to Alejandro. Very well, then talk to him you shall. Let none bar the entry of these companions. Uh, and you see that a secret stone door opens at a diagonal in the steps of the library going down. Can I just say, you've been working on your voices and it, you sound great. You know, that vocal coach really, came really, by. Really we well. got, thank just, you. I, it's really impressive, just since the last time we spoke, it's great. It's hard because our diaphragms are made of stone. <laughs> what did you used to sound like? Hmm? What did you used to sound like? <laughs> we used to sound like this. Awesome. <laughs> Santa Claus is dead, everyone. Let's go. Oh, well, okay, let's Maybe. go. Um, you guys walk uh, down uh, into the Gramercy Occult Society, the New York Public Library. Uh, you go down the steps, and the steps immediately, like M.C. Escher, so that you're sideways, upside down, open, going through other doors, and you arrive in an upside down uh, library where the gravity's been reversed, so you know that your heads are pointed away from the sky, but it looks totally normal to you. Huge, tall libraries everywhere, covered in books, um, and you see that uh, a very old, extremely rotund 
man walks out. Um, he's got a big white mustache, a little flat cap, uh, and comes out to talk to you guys. Uh, he has the warmest eyes, uh, just looks like an extremely gregarious guy, uh, but he's definitely like well into his 90s. Uh, you see that this is your friend Alejandro. Alejandro, what's going on, man? Oh, Kingston Brown, it is so good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you as well. Hey, but we have a situation. Uh, my man over here, Jeffrey, got some kind of Santa disease. I don't know, what are y'all here yeah. for? Oh, well, uh, mm. Yes, we found uh, Santa's sleigh abandoned. What? Reindeer's gone. What? Some sort of attack from the pixies. I found no. some little pixie mint stuff. Yeah, yeah Santa's real, you know that. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Santa's real. Is he, how many people here yes. are new? Who's new? Is going Jeffrey, on. I think, no, is pretty. His it. name's Peter, I think. What? What? Would you check my bracelet when I was out, man? Yeah. <laughs> it was dangling in my face while I was running. You run so fast. <laughs> um, it you said see, something infernal on it. Uh, Alejandro looks at you and says, Wait a minute, you are being serious. Santa Claus is missing right now. Yeah, and somebody left behind some kind of infernal room. Yeah, I couldn't read it. It's it's all infernal to me. Um, right he now. says, We've been getting some strange reports. Hold on. Um, he touches a bookcase and a shimmering thing of light appears over it. And you see that there are two uh, twin young women, they look about 17 years old. Uh, they are clearly like Alejandro's granddaughters. Um, you uh, might recognize them, but you see it says, Anna, Amelia, what is wrong? Because they are clearly injured. Um, you see that the two of them say, Grandpa, we're out here fighting. There's, something's wrong. These SantaCon clones, they're, they're not like normal. They're really dangerous. They're, a bunch of them are coming. We think they're coming from Times Square. Ugh. Okay, this is the first thing I think I can do to help. I know how to fight. All right. Well. I don't know what the f else is going on, um, but I can fight. Alejandro looks and says, Anna, Amelia, get to safety right now. Hold on. Um, and you see that all of these little running trains, like subway cars of light appear and draw this insane like subway map rune in front of Alejandro. And he whoom, pushes it past you and it like scans you. And he grabs the light, condenses it in his hand and says, I'm going to see what is going on. If my granddaughters are in trouble, that means that things have gotten very bad indeed. They are very proficient wizards, all right? Wizards. I've been holding my gun this whole time, but like incognito. Well, you think you think I don't know that you're trapped? Mm -hmm. Give it a shot, see what happens. Why don't you I, give it a I'm shot? Ask you don't, 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 oh, don't, please do it. I love it when do people it. do this. Hey, Go Peter? ahead. Oh, I hey, love Peter? it. Hey, Peter, put the gun down. Is this hey, a Peter? joke, though? Who down. are you guys working no, no, for? No, he can do it. <laughs> you see, a little shield appears in front of him and says, so cool. You think I'm going to walk around? I've been a wizard in New York City for a while. 65 years, you think a bullet is going to do the trick? Uh, listen to me. You have been awakened into the unsleeping city. There is a world behind the world. New York is a place of magic. In this realm, the city that never sleeps, the dream world and the waking world commingle, intertwine, and in certain places become one. I do not know why it has happened. We will find out in due time. But you are now here in the unsleeping city with all of us. Magic is real. And you better get your together or it's going to be a real bad look. Get back. Uh, you see, he says, I will study this. Make your way to Times Square as soon as you can. Um, and he turns around and disappears. I just start running to, let's go, guys. <laughs> I feel like there's a faster way for us to get there. Yeah, we don't right. need to Sorry, run. Don't need okay. to run. I'll just run. chase Mr. March. <laughs> uh, you guys head off. Uh, you walk out, uh, Kingston. You look out, um, uh, and you see your bus pulls up. Fantastic. Um, you see Suzette opens it and says, Kingston, you're downtown now. Yeah, we need to get to Times Square pronto. You see, she looks. And for a second, she looks like, no way is that on my route. But she says, 
Oh, I'm, I got mixed up. I'm on the wrong route. That's right. Times Square. Next stop, Times Square. Bing, bing. And a trafficless street opens up as Kingston gets on the bus. You guys take off. As you pull into Times Square, you see that Times Square is empty. Ooh. Covered <laughs> in snow and ice. This is like in the walking dead. In the center is an enormous icy cocoon, a chrysalis of ice. And you look and see swarming SantaCon clones. <laughs> the bus pulls away, and I'm gonna need all of you to roll initiative. That's all for this episode of The Unsleeping City. Tune in next week, and we'll catch you guys then. Forget about it. <laughs> Dice. Guys, that's all for this chapter of Dimension 20. But wait, more full episodes call out to you from the realms beyond dropout.tv. Will you come to their aid and sign up for your free trial today? We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, even in these times, he's laughing. Ah, it's crushing me! <laughs> <laughs>